apparently I'm live. Just a couple minutes early. Hi, say hi if you're there. Can you hear me okay? If you uh, don't mind writing a little note in the chat, that'd be great. Just a minute early, so. Just gonna wait till 2.30, which it almost is, or 8.30 or 7.30, depending on where you are. All right, so hello to whomever is with me now and whomever will be watching this at a later date. And thanks for joining in. Um, this is, first time around, but I do hope to have a situation once a month that we can call a live stream sing-along art song party. And uh, I'll choose a different set of repertoire each month and I'll play piano parts and you'll sing <laughs> or just watch, whatever you like to do. Um, so we're going to start uh, with this second series uh, of, of her melody. Uh, the songs in that series begin with Sylvie and then comes Berceuse. And after that is this very fun serenade. And then the, four, the final song we'll do today is Le Miroir, the final song from that set. Um, so I'll start with those four, and then we'll go to the other set of six. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Um, if you could just say yay, nay. Can you hear my speaking voice okay? Awesome, thank you. Um, so yeah, this uh, setup is a little bit, little bit new, of a new instrument, of a new router. So let's hope for the best. All the things will work. And uh, uh, if you haven't yet clicked on subscribe, you're most welcome to do so. It's really helpful if you can. All right, so I'm gonna start with this song, Sylvie. And uh, if you, you probably know that already, the, the notes uh, are available for free download from IMSLP and I left you a link here under the video. Uh, and this song, Sylvie, um, it's a little bit odd at first, a uh, little bit unsure. Where, what key are we in? In fact, on IMSLP, they've written it as it's in A flat for the medium key, which is actually incorrect. It seems like it would be A flat because it starts with A flat chords, but it's actually E flat. So at first, the, the protagonist, the singer, the poet is seems quite lost and then has a memory of their love and it's it's really passionate and lovely and then again becomes a bit um, pensive and confused perhaps and and then again this really beautiful it's a uh, avec chaleur with warmth so that comes at the bottom of the first page and then again at the bottom of the third page um, yeah so a love song about someone in the past. So let's try it. And um, there's a little bit of an intro, and then the singer will come in on voice. All right. So let's give it a go. Thank you. 
beautiful song, a little bit unusual, uh, harmonically, where are we? And then uh, I see where we are. Um, so if it's helpful, uh, I have some of the translations and you can just let me know if you want me to read them. And uh, you can give me feedback about how much detail um, you'd like. And uh, even if you want to repeat a song, we can do that. <laughs> Um, so if, if you want to take part in, in dialogue, there's the chat there. All right, so uh, let's move on to this beautiful, ah, uh, this, is, this is one of my favorites, this Berceuse, this lullaby. Uh, it's so sweet. Um, musically, it's sweet. The words are so sweet and they just feel nice in the mouth. Um, beautiful sounds. So um, yeah, the idea is speaking to the, the child. Um, child, if you sleep, the angels are going to bring you lots of stuff. <laughs> um, one of my favorite images that the angels will bring is des lapins blancs avec des rubans. I mean, that just is beautiful language. The white bunny rabbits with their ribbons. <laughs> How sweet is that? And then um, on the third page, uh, these uh, elephants are going to come and they have um, palanquin. <clears throat> I think those um, modes of transportation that sit on the back of an elephant, some sort of a chest or a box or something. And in those palanquins are, are these uh, treasures. <clears throat> I think more bunny rabbits. Yeah, so um, here we go with this very sweet verses. <clears throat> I wish I could sing, I would sing along, <laughs> but I won't. song I think yes a sweet lullaby <laughs> um, and then the yeah the elephants in the middle um, uh, so I wanted to celebrate Pauline Viardot because um, well two years ago we had a lot of 
hullabaloo about Clara Schumann. And that was well-deserved and wonderful and uh, so great to hear so much of her music. And then this past year, 2020, our favorite year ever, um, of course, there was a lot of celebration of Beethoven and his 250th. And um, so we need someone to celebrate now in 2021. And uh, there she is, Pauline Viardot. She was a superstar in her day. And uh, it might be interesting if you want to know more about her. Of course, there are all kinds of sources. But I just got this book. Uh, it's backwards for me. I don't know if it's backwards for you. It's called The Europeans by Orlando Figes. I think it's how you say his name. Three Lives and the Making of a Cosmopolitan Culture. Um, I don't read a lot of books anymore, I'm sorry to say, but I've, I've made my way through the first 45 pages or so, and I find it really interesting. <clears throat> and so the three lives are Pauline Viardot, or Pauline Garcia. She was born in Spain to Spanish parents, so she's often known as Pauline Garcia Viardot. Anyway, she, she married, she was only 18, I think, um, a gentleman uh, by the name of Viardot who was helping her with her career, managing her and whatnot. He was, I think, a good 20, 21 years older. And then, um, I haven't got to that part yet, but it's common knowledge about her and Viado that they, they lived as a, a threesome, I guess. I mean, she, Pauline, was involved with the Russian novelist writer Ivan Turgenev. So they, they sort of had this very interesting um, domestic situation. But um, around that, this, um, this author is painting a picture of 19th century Europe, which is quite fascinating. Uh, yeah, so check that out if you read books, or even if you don't, it's kind of fun to get back to that. Now this, this next song in this set of six, the Dizium Serie, um, this is a serenade, which just super cracks me up. It is the funniest song. What did you say? Yeah. Not backwards. Okay, good. Um, it's so slapstick. This guy, it's written in bass clef, so um, obviously intended, I guess, for a man to sing, but we don't care about that anymore. We can sing whatever we want. But anyway, this character is so desperate to go up to the balcony where his the object of his desires is and he's just like trying everything like can you let down your um your hands can you can you get your uh chaperone to help can you can you throw down a ribbon um hey can you actually get the strings off of your guitar and and throw those down to me. Like he's so desperate, it's so crazy. Um, I think eventually he settles for being um, elevated by the scent of her per perfume or something. <laughs> anyway, um, I think Pauline Viardot had a bit of a sense of humor about this text by the famous Théophile Gautier. Um, just by the way she sets it, I think, Definitely, she's she's mocking mocking him. That's my reading of it. Um, what else was I gonna tell you? Uh, oh yeah, you know, I'm two years into this mission of my life now to really look into female composers. And one of the things that keeps coming up is uh, often the scores of uh, female composers from back here in the 19th century, especially full of um, misprints. Um, in fact, I played for my uh, other YouTube channel, which perhaps you could go there and subscribe to and listen. Uh, it's called Piano Music She Wrote with my good friend and colleague, Erica Sipes, who's here, thank you. Um, uh, so I played a piece of Pauline Viardo on that channel last week, a week ago, and man, that score was full of mistakes, full of mistakes. So uh, be a little bit wary. When, when we get to this part about the guitar strings, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's intentionally wonky because 
the guitar strings are going to be out of tune if you whip them down. Um, but it could be a misprint, could be her joke. Not sure. Anyway, here we go. Let's try it. So, um, sing in your best. All right, sort of a manly dude, I think. <laughs> Who knows? Do it however you want. Here we go. Uh, just good silly fun some fingering didn't quite work out for me but um i just want to say if anybody is interested in uh mp3s karaoke um accompaniments that's something i'm happy to do for a small fee um so you can just get in touch with me about that and you know lots of keys are available um this new instrument of mine is actually a hybrid digital acoustic piano. So it has lots of capabilities within its workings. Um, glad that was you reading that, yeah. Okay, so then there's this uh, fourth song called Le Miroir, The Mirror. And uh, I think that's quite a romantic, um, the text is a little tricky to, to figure out. You need a bit of time to sort out some of the images, but um, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of a straightforward, very 19th century. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's give it a go. So good long intro. Uh, good, we'll see how good it is. But anyway. <laughs> Can be you starting on F. Okay, here we go.
is Le Miroir. Uh, what does he even say about that? It's uh, quite theatrical, I find. You can kind of tell how she spent a lot of her life in the theater, off the stage. Um, quite overblown in the best 19th century way. All right, so I would love to then go over to the other set of songs because I believe uh, the fifth and sixth song in that first, the uh, second series, uh, those are a duet and a thing for three voices. I think that's the case, yeah. So not suitable for social distancing. Um, so here we have A La Fontaine. And, um, okay, just checking the screen there. Tell I'm blind. Um, A La Fontaine. Uh, so again, a, a love song, of course. Um, it's a bit of a virt um, virtuosity, not quite virtuosity, but perpetual motion for the pianist. So that can be fun. Uh, there's a couple spots here and there, which I think might be a little bit tricky for entries, especially in this kind of a situation where we're not in the same room. In fact, the very beginning, your first entry, you're going to hear uh, on the second line. And then you're going to come in. So yeah, it's easy to get mesmerized there. Um, there's this spot on the third page where uh, réchauffé au fond de puits obscur l'image I think that's a spot where you're going to want to just stretch that a little bit l'image with a nice long M because there's a real shift there uh, from uh, from the point of view of the pianist but also just color wise uh, and then another spot to look out for again on the third page this un peu retenu. I think that just needs a little moment to settle into the downbeat so that we can start the new retenu tempo. Um, yeah, those spots just seem like little, let's collect ourselves a little. Um, okay, let's see what happens a la fontaine. So you're going to be waiting for that. And then you're going to be uh, maybe a little bit safe tempo wise here today. We'll see. take a cautious tempo and it doesn't help anything. Maybe we should do this one again a little bit quicker. Now let's see how, how much more we get. Me being me. Of course you sang it perfectly I'm sure. <clears throat> All right let's try it again. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Thank you. 
more successful. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's a lovely, lovely ray of sunshine, that song. And then uh, my only suggestion, if you're gonna do this whole set in, in order, I think it's just slightly unfortunate that uh, these two songs, the first and second, <laughs> both have a similar tempo and uh, at least the second one starts with this uh, 16th note motion that this one ends with. So I'm going to take a slightly different tempo, I think. I just think if they're back to back and it's exact same tempo, which it says, Allegretto in both cases, that's, that's not that interesting. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so again, uh, guess what? Someone's in love. Um, lots of beautiful nature um, images. I just think this is an extraordinary, seems like a very simple little song, but extraordinary how the text informs the harmonic changes, I think. So let's see what happens here. should be a little moment but I was somehow distracted about something I don't know what okay so shall we go on to Isiba um, which we know the text from Foray text of Subi Prudhomme um, so this uh, here the, the text is very kind of depressed um, uh, wishing for the beauty and the excitement of the past um, and somehow getting very caught up in that, the, the remembrance of the past and how wonderful it was. And then, oh shit, at the end. It's a bit of a bummer at the very end. <laughs> um, but again, it's, I think a very beautiful song. So you're going to be So here we go. Thank you. 
And so I think that that really shows what a brilliant composer she was in such a seemingly simple little song. Um, I mean, the songs of Viado have, have come through <laughs> here and there in my life as a collaborative pianist. Not very often though, probably I would be able to count them on maybe one and a half hands. Uh, so why is that? That's changing now, I hope. Um, you know, nothing against Rinaldo Hahn or uh, Fauré or um, Chausson or any of these guys, but why not? Why not this? Why not use this more? This is fantastic. Um, this is meant to be a party. So I don't know what you're drinking, but I, here, skull. party by yourself talking to a screen okay um uh so i want to say the next time i'd like to do this is in a month in four weeks um i'd be open to doing something like this more often and i'd be open to possibly um using zoom so that the singers can be aware of each other obviously we wouldn't be in sync so it'd just be visually but um, if you're interested in something like that, do get in touch. <clears throat> so uh, I believe the next live stream sing along art song party will be uh, February 13th, same time, Saturday afternoon at 2.30 or 8.30 in Europe, 7.30 in the UK. Um, my idea is uh, to do Scandinavian composers and uh, focus on their songs in German. So no worries if you don't speak a uh, Scandinavian language. All right, so we have um, Agatha Backe Grendal uh, from Norway and Ika Perun from Sweden and Hilde Seestel from Denmark. So I'll uh, advertise that soon, but that's my idea. You know what, I'd love to do this Isi Ba once more, if that's okay with y'all. Um, I just, I just love it. So let's, let's check it out. for indulging me that. Um, I was imagining how beautiful you sound and how lovely it would be to be in the same room with you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is what we have right now and it's something. Um, so let's look now at another serenade. This one is Serenade a Rosine. Um, I believe this is... <clears throat> Uh, Spanish influence, 
And um, although, although Pauline was of Spanish background, she was actually French. Um, uh, grew up in, in France. But her father, who was an incredible, famous operatic singer, um, he uh, had a huge influence on her musically. And um, the whole family was, you know, brilliant musicians all around and singer, also singers. And uh, they would sing together uh, in uh, <clears throat> uh, productions of uh, operas. They even went to the US and did a opera production, just the family <laughs> in New York, I think it was. Um, but also they would sing together the Spanish repertoire. Anyway, so you can hear this Spanish influence here. And it's, of course, in the text, Sous ta mentille sombre. All right, here we go. You're going to come in right away. Sous ta mentille sombre. Uh, yeah, just a pretty straightforward uh, serenade. Here we go. Madrid. Um, before we do that, um, I just want to mention again, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, you see what it says there? Piano music she wrote. Actually designed this poster and they're ready for sale. Merch. <laughs> Um, this is this amazing project uh, that I'm so grateful to have had. Well, I mean, it's still, we're still doing it. Um, Erica Sipes from Virginia and I, we've gone through all of IMSLP uh, to find all the piano music written by women. And we've cataloged it all in a super duper spreadsheet that took us months of toil. Um, which is available for a small donation of $10 US. Um, and uh, along with that, we record two uh, videos a week, every Wednesday and Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We release another piece of music that we have found to be particularly incredible and wonderful. And where have you been all my life? 
uh, from within that repertoire from IMSLP. So it'd be really uh, swell if you want to go and check that out because there's over 50 uh, videos now. I think we're closing in on 60. We've been at this about six months now. And um, some incredible music. In fact, the one that um, was released today, I just think it's the most incredible piece of music. And um, it's just so wonderful working with, with Erica, who's just such a fine pianist. And we, uh, I think we, our skills complement each other and we just have a really good time doing it, even when we're slogging and creating spreadsheets. Okay, so that was a little bit advertising, but it'd be lovely if you go to the channel called Piano Music She Wrote. Thanks. Okay, here we go, Madrid. Um, the poet of this and the following song is Alfred du Musset, who had a massive crush on Pauline Viado. Um, kind of a bit much, but yeah. So, uh, you know, Pauline Viado was right in the thick of it culturally in the 19th century in Europe. Just the people that she associated with, the people that, um, you know, were her friends and her associates, just a major who's who of uh, European culture, both uh, musicians and poets and artists and <clears throat> yeah. And not just France, but she traveled a lot, she was in Russia quite a bit and the UK or England, I guess we called it there. And um, Spain, of course, Italy, Germany, Berlin. Um, yeah, so very uh, cosmopolitan, incredible figure. Uh, and then somehow we didn't notice her for some decades in there, the early 20th century. Uh, she died in 1910, I believe. So that was a time when a lot of these female composers from, from the 19th century, they just got sort of swept under the carpet or something. So uh, let's do lots this year to celebrate Pauline Viado. And if you have any ideas of any projects that can be done, you know, this way, keep me in mind. All right, uh, da, 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 Madrid, let's see what happens. This is very, very Spanish. Um, oh, you know what? I want to point out. So the second line, there's this melisma, this span. And uh, the first time it's um, espan. Okay, fine. And then that thing comes again. On the second page, third line, bon de, but different, only slightly different. Instead of it's so pranga, and then it comes again, which is where does it come again? Oh yes, on the very last page, and then this time completely different. Uh, so. So yeah, that's fun and just keeps you on your toes. Uh, as does this song for the pianist the entire time. Here we go. Thank you. 
would be a good showstopper uh, ending for a group or a program when we do those things, performances. Remember, we used to do those. Uh, so then, uh, Les Filles de Cadiz. So this is a famous song by other composers. I think Debussy and Delib both set this text. Uh, again, very Spanish. Um, let's see what happens. Even though my printer printed it pink, let's see if I can uh, help you through this. So we do um, all the way through first ending and then back to right here, fifth bar again, and then all the way through to the end. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so you're going to be. Let's see, there's some quick little text moments here on the second page. So that's probably as fast as we'd want to go, or maybe even slower for now. No, let's be brave. <clears throat> But um, there are these songs um, that I mentioned there in the in the description box of the 15th century. They're so sweet, so glorious. Um, so six chansons du 15e siècle. Uh, just let me give you a little little treat, uh, a little taste, rather. So it's a, quite like a, a lute or something. so glorious. So um, 
Yeah, and there's some uh, ensemble songs within there as well. So uh, thank you so much for coming along today to this little um, sort of a trial run on the idea. Uh, let me know your uh, feedback and your ideas of what, what we can do to keep this going and um, what how it can help you. And uh, please be in touch. My email address is on my website or you can uh, find me on Messenger or Instagram or Twitter, blah, everywhere. So I'd love to hear from you and uh, see if you'd like to join in on uh, singing some Scandinavian composers from Norway, Sweden, and Denmark in four weeks. And if you want to do anything else along these lines, I'm game. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to press this little button called End Stream, in unless there's anything anyone wants to have sung again or anything. Can I give you 10 seconds to respond to that? <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Thanks so much for joining. See you next time.